This is simultaneously one of the potentially coolest and unfortunately one of the most underdeveloped features of the Apple TV 4K. We're talking about profiles. So if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you have a family that's using the device in a living room like this, you may want to have access to different things based on the interest, the ages, the maturity, and all of that of your family members. I know that's the case specifically for me. We've got four people here, uh, my wife and my two kids, and again, different ages, different maturity levels, and we use the Apple TV 4K pretty much exclusively. So in this next video in my Master Your Apple TV 4K series, we're gonna talk about using profiles, what they can do, and unfortunately, a lot of things that they can't do. So we'll cross our fingers and hope that in WWDC, perhaps this June, we see some improvement and some new development specifically in this area of the box. So the key thing to know about profiles is that one, you wanna make sure that the first person that you log into the box is the one that you want to kind of be the main user. If you're the one watching this video, you're probably the default user for your household. I know that I am. And then add the additional ones after that. Switching profiles is really easy. You basically take the home button on your Siri remote and you hold it. And we get this new kind of control center fly-in window. I will be blurring a little bit out because I don't need to divulge the names and necessarily the faces of my family members. But suffice to say, up here in the corner, really cool that we get to see basically the picture registered against their iCloud account as well as their name. And we can, we can tweak that a little bit more specifically later on too. But ultimately, switching profiles is as easy as that. Hold the home guide button, go to the profile of the person that you want to select, and you'll always be able to see the active one with that green checkbox on the circle of the picture. And there we go, hello dad. Now the key thing that I want you to take away about profiles is that they're really only good for Apple-based services, not everything else on the box. If you are an Apple Music subscriber, this is probably the best example of it. I go here, launch the Apple Music app, and if I go to my library, now the information presented here in Apple Music is specific to me because of my profile. We have an Apple One, uh, the, the Super Apple One Plus subscription, gives us access to Apple Music. We use that for all of our music playing. So I've got playlists, I've got favorited albums and all of that. My wife has different ones. And when we use the box, which a lot of times here in the living room, we will play music throughout the day uh, into the room throughout the household. We wanna be able to access our individual music and profiles let us do that. So if I look through my playlist, I can see the stuff that I set up, my gym playlist, and even actually the shared playlist that we make as well. I don't want to make this video really all about Apple Music. I want to focus on the profiles. But again, this is one of the cooler aspects of the capability. So now if I go to profiles and I switch and I switch over to my wife's, welcome back, mom. We relaunch Apple Music, go over to the library. We see different stuff. We see her stuff. Pretty cool. Now, because this is a, a really uh, iCloud and Apple account focused feature, we also get independent ability to have game saves and game center information. So here, for example, we play a lot of sneaky, sneaky Sasquatch here. My son really loves the game. I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. And as we can see, there's no save games. All right, well, let's take a look at the difference when I switch back to my profile. So we're gonna go back up here. Welcome back, Dad. Relaunch Sneaky Sasquatch. Signed in is my Game Center ID, and there's my save files. Pretty cool. And of course, because it's all iCloud based, right? Those, those that saved information, the saved games, they translate all across the Apple ecosystem. If you're also gaming on an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac through Apple Gaming Services. Now, again, keep in mind that this really only extends around Apple specific things and the collection of Apple-based apps that are on the Apple TV itself. So if you wanna be able to see individualized pictures uh, in the Photos app, podcasts, this is really what you would use the profiles for. So there is a little bit of configuration, configurability under profiles. If you go into settings, you go to users and accounts, you can see there the ability to switch from this menu, although you generally use the fly out, the fast switch. You can select a default user, and add additionals. Now, if I go into my specific user settings, within the way Apple works, I have the ability to kind of make, make separate accounts. I use one Udefined account for all my stuff. So iCloud Store and Game Center for all of us are specific to our individual Apple IDs. Can enable iCloud Photos as well for the user. 
and we have the option here for the one home screen on the default user. I love this feature. I talked about that in a prior video where I was discussing app management and uh, configuration. A couple other settings that I think are neat. We have the ability to recognize my voice when we're using Siri, as well as the ability to kind of customize the name that shows up for your specific profile on the box. So depending if you have a different name set for your Apple ID, but you want something more accessible actually in the UI, here again, I used, I used mom and dad instead of Jeremy and my wife's name. That's there. And a couple other minor, uh, minor settings as well and a little bit of account management to go along with it. So the Siri stuff enables a few things that I think are pretty neat. If I switch back, if I switch back to my wife's profile and I use Siri, switch to my profile. There we go. Welcome back, Dad. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why this is not exactly the best feature or maybe the most developed feature on the Apple TV and in the Apple ecosystem as well. For example, one of the things that Profiles doesn't let you do is actually customize the apps, which would, which would be one of the most basic elements that you would expect this feature to allow. Here, so here on my wife's profile, I'm gonna go ahead and grab an app and move it around. And then I'm gonna go back to my profile and you can see it didn't flip back. So the organization, the foldering, the presentation of the apps has nothing to do, unfortunately, with the profiles. I would very much, very, very much like to see this as a feature. And they don't even have to do it all that complex, meaning the box knows the full collection of all the apps that are currently installed. I wouldn't, if I didn't want to show an app on a given profile for my kids or whatever, I wouldn't have to uninstall that app specifically, more so just hide it in the UI, Apple. Let me, let me configure the ability to hide apps, set an app order, put different things on the top row based on the user that's using the box at the moment. I think this feature would be really, really easy for them to do, quite honestly, speaking as a software developer anyway, because it doesn't have to change the underlying structure of what's installed or what's access accessible specifically on the box. The other thing that Profiles doesn't do and really needs to is to be able to have have a profile mapping within the other apps itself. Meaning, I know all the people that are installed on my Apple TV. More than likely, right, those are gonna be the same people that are using Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, and all of the other apps that let you have your own profiles within their systems. So connect this stuff up, right? Make it smart, Apple and all of these service providers, and give me a mapping. Let me map my Apple TV profile to a specific profile in Netflix, in Disney Plus, and so on, such that when I launch those apps based on me being the active user of the box, I shouldn't have to go through this step every time. I think it's really kind of a pain to have a profile registered on a box and have to reselect profiles during the actual like using usability sessions or watching sessions while we're using the box. So those are really two, uh, two untapped items I really hope, you know, this is this area, this feature of the box is ripe for improvement. And it's one of the things that I really, really hope we'll see uh, in the near term. I think there's even a couple more cool things that they could do with this in terms of having connected uh, devices in the Apple ecosystem and generally knowing like who's connecting from what device. For example, if I pull up my iPhone and I use the iPhone uh, Apple TV remote control to connect to the box, Hey, you know it's my iPhone, you know it's me connecting to the box. Why is my wife still signed in, right? Flip it over to me and let me control it. Or at least give me some options, right? Sometimes automation and trying to do things too smart in our systems and in our home theater setups doesn't always work, right? Doesn't always work how we would like it to work in all situations because there's variables involved. Right, maybe my wife was playing music and I just needed to tweak something on the box and I didn't necessarily want it to stop playing music and switch over to my profile. But it would be so easy to have options for this stuff, right? Give us options and settings that let us control the behavior, control when perhaps certain types of automatic profile changes would occur and give us the flexibility to choose for ourselves uh, under what situations it would be useful for that to happen or not. I think as well, there's an opportunity to kind of link this more to parental controls and all of that. Of course, again, Apple knows the profile, they know the Apple ID, they know the age and the, the limitations and the maturity details of the person that is in fact watching the box. That stuff will flow through, but it only really works, again, in the Apple ecosystem type of stuff and not more pervasively in the system. 
So there you go, a, 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 an overview, a look at how to potentially use profiles on your Apple TV. If you're heavily vested in the Apple ecosystem and using the Apple TV for that, this will be more useful to you than if you're just using the box for general video watching. However, at the same time, Apple, there you go, in appeal. Please put some development effort, some engineering design and implementation power into making this feature better. Check out the Apple TV playlist here uh, in the last video. I've done a bunch of these now in the master your Apple TV settings. And let me know what other aspects of the box can I go into some detail, break down, explain, and highlight for you. Sound off in the comments. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the video where you think the information may be useful. And if you'd like to support the channel, a whole bunch of ways to do that. Super thanks, channel memberships, affiliate links to places like Amazon and audio advice if you're buying some awesome home theater and hi-fi gear and come on back for more home theater discussion and fun. Thanks.